Does New York City currently look like this? Do we power our lights by doing this? Are we surviving a global food shortage by crushing up old people in little tiny green crackers and eating them like this? My name is Alex, and I live in the future. This is my series about futuristic movies set in the current year, and it's 2022, which means we can watch Soylent Green from 1973. You know the ending, I knew the ending, it's the most spoiled ending in all of movies. It's people. But I did not know how they got there or why, so I watched it for the first time this week. And it is a journey. The year is 2022, and everything is much worse because of, um, all of it. It's just bad. A cop in a jaunty neckerchief is really set on solving the murder of one of the richest people in town, even though it's going to cause him to learn a lot of stuff he did not want to know. Like, the thing that we all know that he figured out. It's people. But it's really more about the journey than the destination. It turns out the real Soylent Green is the people you eat along the way. How did Soylent Green do it predicting the future? I mean, it does kind of suck right now, right? I mean, climate change? Yeah, you nailed that. A hundred points. It's really warm right now. But not everything is right. Like, for example, in this movie there are 40 million people living in New York. And that is off by, like, 30 million. It's not a great number. There's a clever metaphor here about how in order to get anywhere in the world you literally need to step on somebody. But these are supposed to be New Yorkers. They're just quiet? There's no way. If you step on somebody in New York, they're gonna be like, Hey, I'm sitting here. In order to keep the power on in their apartments, they have to ride stationary bicycles. And that's not true currently, but sometimes you do have to pedal a bike in order to get a beer. So. This one's a wash. The rich guy decides to buy a video game for his live-in prostitute, and the video game looks like this. That's kind of a hilarious miss. And in fact, this whole apartment is pretty funny because basically they're predicting that in the future, apartments from rich people will look exactly like they did in the 70s. Screens will never get bigger or smaller. The taste in couches will remain the same. The only thing they thought would change is that prostitutes would stay the night every night, I guess. It's really weird. Minus five points for this one. At one point, he pays $270 for groceries and this is what he gets. And... That seems pretty believable. Groceries are extremely expensive. But then he refers to those dollars as D's, like... It makes it 279 D's and 15 cents. Which is disgusting, and nobody says that, and that one, minus a thousand points for having to hear you say that. This NYPD officer is very dedicated to solving a murder. Pfft, implausible. Minus ten points. And then, of course, there's the rampant cannibalism, and, like, the year's not quite over, but I'm gonna call it 2022 was not the year we all turned to cannibalism. If that happens in November, and all of a sudden everybody's eating people, fine. There will be egg on my face. Because you're making me into a carbonara. But I am not expecting that, so I want to give him a negative 45 points here. Then, of course, there's the scoops. We gotta talk about the scoops. The way they do crowd control is by putting these giant metal shovels on the front of garbage trucks and just scooping people up. And although I have not seen it, that feels entirely plausible for 2022. This is absolutely something the cops would do if they were allowed to. Plus six points. Overall, for futurism, it's actually not that bad. And this was 50 years ago. This is a pretty solid prediction. Grading on that curve, I'm gonna give you a B plus. Good work, Sonic Green. As far as recommending the movie goes, I actually kind of do. I mean, there are some cheesy parts, but pizza's cheesy, and that's my favorite. This has got really good acting, some really interesting futurism stuff, some decent character work, and, like, the twist is really good. It's people. I can't imagine what it was like to watch this movie in theaters and not know what Soylent Green was. Which brings me to a weird side note about this whole thing. There is a food product right now called Soylent. You've probably seen it. It's basically just Ensure Shakes, but for tech bros. They named it after a dystopian cannibal snack. Like, what was possibly going on that they thought they could just reclaim Soylent as a word for food where you don't know what it's made of. I mean, it's so bizarre. So I guess maybe not everybody had the ending spoiled for it. Maybe some people just saw the posters and were like, oh, Soylent is food. Neat. Let's try that. But I know the end of the movie now, so you could not in a million years convince me to spend my hard-earned D's on a bottle of Soylent. 